I'm Nancy Rolfsma with On Point's Tutorials, Tips and Tours. We are at the point in our quilt making that it's about time to put the borders on. So before I actually take you through step by step how to put the borders on your Learn to Quilt quilt, I thought it would be fun to do a little quilt show on the table. So I brought quite a few quilts from home. It was very hard to decide which ones to bring because there was a lot to choose from. So I tried to pick ones that had different interesting borders. So I hope that you enjoy the show. So the first quilt on the table is a quilt that is going to show you the simple straight borders. So with this quilt, you're just going to have horizontal borders. Generally speaking, you're going to put on your two side borders first and then the top and the bottom. So this would be a traditional horizontal set border. This next border is going to be a border with cornerstones, but what makes this one extra fun is that the corner is not just a regular piece of fabric. So oftentimes I find myself using a cornerstone border when I realize I don't have enough fabric for the borders. So instead of the fabric having to go all the way across to the top, I can cheat and put a border fabric or a cornerstone fabric here in the corner. But with this one, I took this stripe fabric and I laid the two squares together and sewed across the diagonal. So it looks like I have a perfect miter border. So I don't know what I would call this. This would be a cornerstone, bo cornerstone border plus, just because it's got that little bit of an extra little look there. This is a really popular border, and this is going to be a fun border to do when you have lots of scraps left over of the quilt when you're making it. So this is a piano key border, and the idea is you're just going to take the leftover strips of fabric, cut them anywhere from one to three inches wide, it really wouldn't matter, it'd be up to you, and you actually just piece them all together into a long strip for the border. So normally, I'm going to put on an inner border first, and then I'm going to put on the piano key border. And I did that same kind of little trick with the corner up here. So I get this perfect little miter, but I just took the two squares, sewed across the diagonal, and it gives you that look that I actually pieced a perfect miter. Whoop. This is just a fun quilt. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to show it. So I was talking about the piano key using one to three inch strips. Well, how about a six or eight inch strip? So I've just used some of the fun fabrics that I had from the, owl, the, from the fabric pack that I used for the owls, and I just cut large pieces of it. So it's just a fun border showing a lot more of the fabrics that came with the collection. This is a quilt I made a long time ago for my husband, and when I made it, I love this piece border. So you use the two shades of the green. So this is a rectangle with a um, connecting corners triangle. And then you have the dark fabric, light fabric, dark fabric, light fabric. And so it gives it that three dimensional look. But I mentioned my husband's very tall. I think this quilt ended up being 70 inches square. So I had to just add about 10 inches to both sides to make it long enough for him. This is one of my favorite borders. This would be a simple horizontal border but I put a cable on it, which totally bumps up the interestingness, is that a word? The, the coolness of your quilt. By adding a cable border to it, instead of just a traditional straight border, make the cables, cutting the bias strips like I showed you earlier. And in this case, I used that half inch wide bias cable bar, and I made these large cables, and it really makes a cool border. Now this is one doing the miter corner. So this is going to be a little bit more of a traditional, not a cheater miter like the other two that I showed you. So here I've got the two pieces of fabric that are a miter in the corner. Now in this segment, I'm not going to take you step by step how to do a miter border. We will do that at a later time though. This border is very cool because not only is it a miter, so starting all the way down here from the corner of the quilt, I have one, two, three, four fabrics all sewn together. That creates the miter and the quilt. And then I added the cable to that to give it really a lot of interest. Now, I cheated on this cable. I did not make this black bias cable. This was a purchased clover black bias that oftentimes you'll see used in some of the stained glass quilt making. So I didn't make the bias, but I did put it down and I machine applicate it down. Love the look of this miter border going all the way out. 
Now this last one, my friend Marty took my Learn to Quilt class. So this is the quilt that we've been making all along. So in the back, you see all the different pieces and parts that we've been working on. Well, when Marty finished the quilt, it actually stops here. The Learn to Quilt quilt stops at this border. It makes it about 70 inches square. Well, Marty decided she needed to have it big enough for a queen size bed. I am opposed, and it's just a personal preference, I am opposed to just putting a 20 inch border on a quilt to make it bigger. I just don't like the look. So her being my student, I told her she couldn't do that, that she had to come up with something more creative than just adding 10 or 15 inches to the edge of the quilt. So she repeated the two borders that were done on the inside, so went with the stripe and then a green. And then for the actual border itself, she recreated the rail fence blocks that were in the center of the quilt. This quilt's border is really, really interesting. So from here, I'm gonna take you through step-by-step step on how to do a straight border and a cornerstone border. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. We wouldn't want you to miss a single show. Please share us with your friends and leave a comment. We would really love to hear from you.